Hello everyone, welcome to the Lightning Ball channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and activate the notification bell. Your support fuels my continued efforts. In our last episode, we discussed how Storm Dragon Veldora personally confronted the Empire's enemy, Scorch Dragon Velgrind, to defend the Monster Federation, managing to fight on equal footing. Unexpectedly, Velgrind abandoned her pride and, along with Emperor Rudra and Imperial Guardian's commander Tatsuya Kandu, jointly manipulated Storm Dragon. In a desperate situation, the overwhelmed Veldora thought of Rimuru. Realizing that if he were controlled, Rimuru could also be harmed, Veldora, in his final moments, severed the soul corridor with Rimuru and surrendered to the controlling magic. In this episode, we'll discuss the evolution of the Demon Legion, Black Numbers, and the birth of Mana's Seal. Let's get started. With the soul-tearing pain of losing Veldora, Rimuru entered a state of complete frenzy. It wasn't the first time Rimuru had lost reason due to anger. Previously, when Xi'an and several other subordinates were killed, Rimuru was filled with self-blame, regret, and rage. However, after a series of events, those subordinates were resurrected, which allowed the later Rimuru to maintain composure even in anger. But this time was different. Veldora was Rimuru's first friend in this strange world, and one could even say that Rimuru was nurtured under Veldora's magicule. Without Veldora, there would be no Rimuru. Therefore, despite his growth, Rimuru couldn't stay calm under these circumstances. At that moment, Benimuru reminded Rimuru-sama that they seemed to be trapped in a special space and asked what to do next. Rimuru knew they had fallen into this fortress of dreams from the start. Making such a significant mistake, even Lord of Wisdom felt confused, seemingly unable to believe being manipulated and losing her composure. However, Rimuru didn't care about these things anymore. After instructing Lord of Wisdom to prepare for an escape, Rimuru issued an order to everyone, stating they must find a way out immediately. With Veldora in the enemy's hands, Ramorus would be struggling to maintain the labyrinth without the huge amount of magicule. Rimura planned to release Tempest City from the labyrinth. Once they teleported out, they would immediately engage in battle with the Empire's forces. Everyone was to prepare for the imminent confrontation. Rimura then declared his determination to reclaim Veldora, showing no fear despite facing two true dragons, along with Emperor Rudra and the Imperial Guardians of the Empire. The odds of victory were irrelevant. The only thing that mattered was to crush the enemy. Lord of Wisdom quickly completed the preparations for escape, and amidst a surge of anger, Rimuru and his team used teleportation magic to return to the skies above the Monster Federation. Upon their arrival, Rimuru was confronted by the sight of two true dragons and an airship. As Rimuru was gearing up for a major confrontation, Lord of Wisdom issued a warning about the difficulty of defeating the Empire with their current power. Uncharacteristically, Rimuru ignored this advice and demanded a solution. Understood. Optimal action, demon summoning, is recommended. Rimuru commended Lord of Wisdom for this suitable suggestion. Originally, Rimuru had planned to evolve the three primordial demon beauties later, but now was the time to unleash their full power and scatter the enemy. Incidentally, Velgrind, noticing Rimuru and his team, widened her eyes in surprise, seemingly unable to believe that Rimuru had so swiftly escaped the so-called Fortress of Dreams. On the other side, Tatsuya Kandu promptly initiated an attack with his handgun, which was effortlessly blocked by the power of Lord of Oath's Absolute Guard. Rimuru glanced towards Kandu, noticing that his attack was ineffective, and that he showed no intention of leaving the airship, instead remaining by Rudra's side as a guard. Thus, disregarding the Empire's airship, Rimuru unhesitatingly proceeded with the demon summoning. In the sky, a vast magical circle appeared, slowly descending from which emerged a foreboding gateway. First to emerge from the gate were Testarossa, Ultima, and Carrera, followed closely by their subordinates, the two demon peers, Moss and Veyron, for archdemons, Esprit, Azura, Zonda, and Cien, as well as six hundred greater demons. With apologetic faces, the demons knelt in unison, bowing in repentance for not having adequately protected the Monster Federation. Rimuru, however, reassured them that there was no need for apologies, 
acknowledging that delaying Velbrind was their goal and the oversight in anticipating the enemy's capabilities was his own fault. He conceded that not knowing about the parallel existence skill was a crucial lapse, but it was not the time for introspection. Rimuru announced his intention to grant power to the three primordial demon beauties, demanding, however, that they, along with all subordinates, avoid entering a sleep state and instead evolve directly, as Diablo had. Upon concluding his statement, Rimuru immediately imbued the three primordial demon beauties with souls, then, without waiting for their evolution to complete, issued directives. He instructed them to wreak havoc as they pleased, but there must absolutely be no casualties on their side, nor allow anyone to interfere with his mission to free Veldora. Diablo inquired about Rimuru's plan for handling Velgrind, a question with an already determined answer. Rimuru stated that since she was an enemy, he would devour her without hesitation. Hearing this, Diablo, Benimaru, Xi'an, and Soyai, his four subordinates, all smiled delightedly, agreeing to take care of the lesser foes themselves. With the support of his companions, Rimuru shifted his focus to the distance. There, Velgrind, having replenished her magicule from the storm dragon, was now at full strength. Meanwhile, the storm dragon, who had once been an ally, now bore hostility towards Rimuru. With a resolute heart, Rimuru vowed to rescue Veldora. Unfurling his wings, he soared towards the airship. Shortly after Rimuru's departure, the three primordial demon beauties completed their evolution, ascending from demon peers to devil kings. With this, all seven primordial demons unleashed their full power, removing their self-imposed restraints and reaching a state of unified existence. This transformation influenced their subordinates, the archdemons, who also evolved. Although Moss and Veyron remained demon peers, their magicule counts had increased to the point where it was comparable to that of an awakened demon lord. The other four, Adra, Esprit, Zonda, and Sien, had also become demon peers, surpassing the demon lord's seed level. The remaining six hundred subordinates transformed into devil chevaliers, each rivaling greater magents in strength. It's worth noting that Diablo's subordinate Venom and 100 demons had already evolved earlier when Diablo did. Currently, these 100 demons were guarding Tempest City within the labyrinth, and Venom was protecting Masayuki inside the labyrinth. The demons, brimming with energy and roaring in unison, seemed to mirror the intensity of Rimuru's fury. Diablo, particularly exhilarated, cheered on Rimuru, almost like a cheerleader expressing excitement at the prospect of Rimuru finally unleashing his true power. Xi'an, ever observant, pointed out Diablo's folly while playfully teasing him, emphasizing that any form of Rimuru-sama was wonderful and that their focus should be on vanquishing the enemy. Although Xi'an's comments included some of her unique perspectives, the point was clear. It wasn't the time to dwell on Rimuru's strength. Their role as executives was simply to clear the battlefield of any lesser foes. Diablo, seizing the moment, raised a hand to draw everyone's attention. He reminded the demon's legion that, although they were immortal beings, the justification of death and resurrection was unacceptable. No one was permitted to die, an explicit order from Rimurasama. As spiritual life forms, demons could revive after a certain period post-death, but this was not an excuse for recklessness. The demons, taking Diablo's words to heart, bowed their heads in acknowledgement. Task allocation was essential, and Diablo entrusted Benimaru with this responsibility. Diablo himself took on a special mission, noting the presence of a little rat aboard the airship that might interfere with Rimurasama's plans, declaring his intent to handle this matter personally. Benimaru nonchalantly shrugged, agreeing to Diablo's plan. After thorough deliberation, the finalized battle strategy unfolded as follows. Testarossa would initiate the assault sweeping clean the imperial foot soldiers, followed by a joint attack with Benimaru, Xi'an, Soyai, the other two devil kings Ultima and Carrera, and four demon peers, directly infiltrating the airship for a decisive battle with the imperial high command. Meanwhile, one hundred devil chevaliers would encircle the airship to prevent enemy escape. The remaining five hundred devil chevaliers, along with two demon peers, Moss and Sien, were dispatched to Dwargan Nation to assist Gabru in combat. On another front, 
The security of the Monster Federation's headquarters was entrusted to the recently awakened barrier Lord Geld and other companions. Echoing Remura's fury, the evolved monsters were rapidly ascending in power. The newfound strength acquired through their awakening, returned to Remura via the food chain, was unbeknownst even to Remura himself, amassing a formidable force awaiting release. Meanwhile, aboard the Imperial airship, Rudra gently stroked Velgrind's blue hair while observing the unfolding scene below. Even he couldn't help but regard the situation with increased caution. Doubts crept in about whether his initial judgment was flawed. Perhaps the first entity they should have eliminated was that slime. From the outset, Rudra viewed Remuru as a significant threat, but in comparison to the true dragon Valdora, a mere demon lord seemed far too fragile. Rudra perceived Remuru as a menace, yet he firmly believed that victory was inevitable with two true dragons on their side. However, one aspect continued to nag at him. Why did Veldora cease resistance against his control so readily? It was uncharacteristic of Veldora to surrender so easily, even if eventual subjugation was likely. The only plausible explanation for such behavior was Veldora's intent to protect something more vital to him than himself. If that was the case, what could be so important? Rudra shook his head, dismissing the thought as overthinking. The idea that Veldora would value the slime demon Lord Remura more than his own being was something Rudra simply couldn't fathom. Amidst the intense atmosphere, Velgrind requested Rudra to issue a command for Veldora to attack Remura with full force. Prepared for the incoming assault, Rudra activated Regalia Dominion, and the two true dragons jointly launched their formidable attack. Remura, flapping his wings, surged towards Velgrind, who was poised and ready. Veldora, emerging first from the airship, roared into the sky and unleashed his full might to annihilate Remuru. Instantly, Remuru found himself encircled by a barrage of light waves, the signature move of Veldora, the storm blast, which had previously given Velgrind a taste of defeat. Lord of Wisdom immediately initiated a defensive maneuver, planning to use Lord of Oath's ability, Absolute Guard, to neutralize the wavelengths. However, Remuru unexpectedly issued a forceful command to evade instead. Influenced by Remuru's directive, Lord of Wisdom swiftly altered the course of action. Yet, she was plunged into confusion. Her decision, derived from complex calculations, was the optimal solution. Why had Remuru-sama overridden it? Although there had been many instances where Remuru had disregarded her advice, this time felt distinctly different. Remuru narrowly dodged the storm blast, which subsequently exploded at his former position, scattering fiery blasts in all directions. The mere aftereffects of the blast penetrated the absolute guard protecting Remuru. In other words, had he not chosen to evade, Remuru might have been grievously injured. Witnessing this, Lord of Wisdom's confusion deepened. Had her calculations failed, or was it an unforeseeable event? How could Remura sama have anticipated this outcome? With these questions in mind, Lord of Wisdom began recalculating the attack, yet still failed to find the reason for her miscalculation. Despite her predictions indicating a 100% chance of blocking the attack, Lord of Wisdom mulled over the paradox, unusually attempting to rationalize her error. However, there was no time to validate these errors amidst the ongoing battle. Remuru swiftly reminded Lord of Wisdom that now was not the time to be lost in thought, pointing out that Veldora's ultimate skill, Lord of Investigation, possesses a troublesome ability called probability manipulation. Hearing Remuru's words, Lord of Wisdom came to a realization. Indeed, such an ability existed, but why had she overlooked such a critical detail? Was it due to someone's interference or something else? Hesitant, Lord of Wisdom who prided herself on her computational capabilities, found herself unable to pinpoint the cause. Continuing in this state would undoubtedly disadvantage them in the battle ahead. However, sharing this concern with Remuru risked being labeled as incompetent, rendering Lord of Wisdom's existence meaningless. Amidst Lord of Wisdom's turmoil, Remuru offered reassurance, stating that Veldora had always been unreasonable and it wouldn't be surprising if his calculation abilities surpassed Lord of Wisdom's. Remuru encouraged Lord of Wisdom not to waver over a minor issue and to trust in herself. Remuru then assigned tasks, 
he would handle Veldora while Lord of Wisdom would engage Velgrind. Remur's words were like treating Lord of Wisdom as a true companion, not just a skill. Continuing to bolster Lord of Wisdom's morale, Remura presented the situation as a two-on-two battle. Lord of Wisdom was to keep Velgrind occupied while Remura looked for an opportunity to free Veldora. He encouraged Lord of Wisdom to hold on, as they were the real partners in this fight. Remura's words calmed the previously agitated Lord of Wisdom. She understood that even after making a mistake, Remura wouldn't abandon her and even relied on her. All she needed to do now was to settle her heart, trust in Remura-sama, and follow his lead. Regaining her confidence, Lord of Wisdom prepared to face Velgrind in battle. At that moment, Rimuru reflected on how he had always referred to his skill as Great Sage or Lord of Wisdom, never giving a proper name. Although it seemed an odd time for such considerations, Rimuru decided to finally bestow a formal name upon Lord of Wisdom. Sensing this intent, Lord of Wisdom experienced an unfamiliar surge of emotion. Whether it was joy or astonishment at this unexpected development, she found herself bewildered yet touched by Remura's thoughtfulness. Despite his own anger and sorrow from losing Veldora, Remura was concerned about her state of being. Such was his character. Remura, with a hint of sentimentality, acknowledged that Lord of Wisdom had taught him much. He chose to name her Seal, expressing that although Seal might not be fond of the name— it could vent any dissatisfaction on the red dragon they were about to confront. A slightly embarrassed and flustered Remura made this suggestion. Seal, now no longer just a skill but a being with emotions, was moved beyond what any algorithm could predict. As the naming ceremony concluded, Seal began to evolve, marking the birth of Mana Seal from the ultimate skill lord of wisdom. I am Seal, the unifier of skills, I am with the soul of Remura-sama providing support to my lord. Ramuru-sama, I look forward to working with you from here on. Seal announced, her voice familiar yet slightly stilted. Even amidst crisis, fear no longer clouded her existence. Ramuru modestly responded, admitting that he was the one being looked after. Just a simple exchange, and Seal felt enveloped in happiness. Ramuru then commanded Seal to showcase her newfound power. As you command, my lord. Thus, Seal emerged from what was once known as Lord of Wisdom. No longer just a skill but a distinct consciousness, she no longer felt fear, even against two of the world's pinnacle true dragons, as long as she was with her master, Rimura-sama. Alright, that's all for this video. In our next episode, we'll delve into one of the climactic moments of the entire Tensura series, detailing Rimura's intense battle against Velgrind and Veldora and his subsequent evolution into a true dragon. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you in the next one.